In today's video, we're going to be going over multiple rounds of storminess as well as multiple tropical cyclones that appear to be very, very likely in the Atlantic Ocean. Let's just get straight into things and take a look at our current radar imagery here. As you can see, it's a little bit quieter today. We do have some showers moving across the Pacific Northwest. We see that for the Rockies, down to the Four Corners, and even down to the South Central United States, there is some storminess. The further south you go, the more persistent that is. The further north you go, the more isolated that appears to be. We see along the Gulf and Southeast Coast, there is some storminess, not as much as we're typically used to, a little bit more sporadic there. And then up for the Northeast, we do have a storm system moving through this region as well. Let's just zoom into the Northwest. We'll take a look at some of these smaller pockets of showers real quickly and then move on to some larger areas. We see these pockets in here looking a little bit more isolated and scattered. Nothing major there for those mountainous regions in the Cascades of Washington to worry about. Uh, definitely some sprinkles possible though. Up here for portions of Colorado, Nebraska, South Dakota, uh, and even Wyoming there. We see some thunderstorms and showers developing there. If you're in the plains there further eastward, definitely looking like thunderstorms. Those areas in the Rockies, however, uh, over the mountains uh, seem to be more like showers. So there's definitely some different uh, factors going on here. Let's just move a little bit further south now. As we can see, there's a larger storm system here over Texas and New Mexico. Definitely bringing quite a bit of flooding rainfall potentially there along that Mexico-Texas border. Uh, definitely something that needs to be watched. There's some heavier areas in there where there's yellows and oranges. Uh, and they're very, very widespread, which is going to lead towards many different impacts, including, like I mentioned, flooding potentially. Uh, definitely seems to be a big risk with an area this large of heavy, heavy rainfall. Now, as we move over the Gulf and the Southeast in general, we can see that the most impacted region right now is going to be Florida, where we do have quite a bit of storminess taking place for some of the southern regions, uh, and then along that western coast of Florida. Uh, we do see that offshore of the other Gulf states, there is some storminess, so this definitely will potentially impact these states later on today. You can't rule out thunderstorms for any of these areas, but right now we're high and dry. Southeast, we do have a storm system in here, but it appears to be moving offshore. That cold front moving through, uh, definitely uh, leaving the East Coast pretty dry this morning. Now, as we can see, as we move further northward, that cold front is still moving in for the Northeast, uh, and it has mostly moved in for everywhere except for pretty much Maine, where there is some rain left over. Uh, southern New England, like Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, had some of that storminess still in the area that a little bit earlier this morning that is now basically moved out. All right, now that's everything going on around the nation. What we're going to do is we're going to move on. We're going to take a look at that upcoming storminess as well as the tropical activity, which has even further exploded from what it was already looking like. Now, here we are taking a look at our GFS model on the upcoming storminess. We can see that later on today, we're going to be dealing with some of this storminess maybe coming in a little bit further north for these southeast states. But overall, uh, a lot less stormy than days past. We can see this low up here, which basically extended this cold front down like this. Uh, last night, it was about here, uh, came through later on in the evening, and then now we can see it is offshore with a lot of that storm. It's more like this, actually. Uh, now, as we move on, and this is going to be tomorrow, uh, September 1st, a little bit quieter as well tomorrow. Nothing will really major will move in. We still see the south central and southeast dealing with some of this storminess. But overall, a lot of dry areas here to begin September here. Friday, September 2nd, we get a little bit more storminess here across the middle of the nation. Uh, we can see four areas in the upper Midwest down through the south central United States, and then a little bit of the southeast there dealing with some of that storminess. Uh, we can see for Saturday, September 3rd here, uh, this area is going to get even further storminess. Southeast, south central, Ohio Valley, uh, Great Lakes, as well as the northeast here as we have a low over top, and that's leading towards uh, a frontal boundary coming down below. We can see for Sunday, which will be uh, September 4th here, we see a lot of this storminess reaching into the eastern United States, especially the southeast and south central here, uh, but also up through the northeast now as well. We're seeing some of that storminess. Now for Monday, which will be September 5th, we see a very similar story, a lot of storminess up here for the south central and the southeastern United States. By the time I reach Tuesday, this will be September 6th. First off, we have a tropical system here in the Pacific near Mexico. Definitely worth noting, we have a lot of storminess here from the four corner states through the south central and the central United States into the mid-Atlantic and southeast also. So a lot of the same here. 
Uh, we can see for Wednesday, September 7th, things quiet up a little bit. We can see uh, here we have this uh, tropical system, very major tropical system, actually right near Mexico. Again, we see some snowfall here in eastern Canada, definitely a sign of the time of year that we're in here. Thursday, which will be September 8th, we can see plenty of storminess still in the eastern half of the nation. For Friday, September 9th, we have the same thing going on. We see a lot of storminess here for a lot of these regions. Uh, and then for Saturday, September 10th here, we have plenty of that storminess happening here across the southeastern United States still. So this is persistently happening day over day here in this model run. Definitely going to be a factor here. When we look at the total precipitation, it's going to be shocking. Uh, we can see a low over top again for September 11th here, Sunday. Uh, and this is leading towards a bit of a front uh, coming down. Some storminess extending to the south of this. Don't know how associated all of it is, but it does appear uh, fairly associated uh, with that low. We see a low develop offshore of the east coast worth mentioning for September 12th here, which will be a Monday. Plenty of storminess over top there. We see the northwest getting involved a little bit as well. Uh, now for Tuesday, which will be September 13th, this low is still out there. We have plenty of storminess in the eastern half of the nation again. Uh, Wednesday here, which will be September 14th, we have a lot of storminess for these regions as well. Eastern United States, North Central United States. Thursday here on September 15th, again, still the eastern United States seeing this storminess, and that's basically the end of the model run, where actually a nor'easter kind of develops here. Uh, Mid-September, not very unheard of. That's definitely the time of year when we start talking about potential nor'easters, but Friday, September 16th, here we see this low develop over the mid-Atlantic. Definitely, definitely worth noting. Uh, my, you know, Take it with a grain of salt, this is the end of the model run, but I think it's definitely worth noting. Now, for total precipitation through the next 10 days, look at that, an explosion in the south-central and the southeastern United States. Uh, if you're anywhere in the whites there out west, we expect practically no precipitation. Your grades would be about a tenth of an inch or less of precipitation. Your greens would be a tenth of an inch to half an inch. Your blues would be half an inch to an inch. Your yellows would be an inch to two inches. Your reds would be two to five inches. And then your browns would be five to ten inches of precipitation there. We see some of that in the south central, southeastern, and mid-Atlantic states of the United States. And then for the blue regions, we see Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas as well. Those areas expect 10 to 15 inches of rainfall. Very, very interesting. And that's plenty of precipitation expected over the next 15 days. Quite a large amount, actually. Uh, now, for the five-day graphical tropical weather outlook, let's just dive right into it. Here we are taking a look at things, and as you can see, we have two code reds and a code orange. That one to the north comes as a bit of a surprise. Yesterday, it wasn't there, and now today, as we look at the percentages, it has a 60% chance of development over the next 48 hours, and then a 70% chance of development over the next five days. Looks to potentially hit Europe, actually, so we'll need to watch that closely. This orange one here entering into the main development region has a 40% chance of development over the next 48 hours, and then a 50% chance of development over the next five days. Certainly uh, a fairly high chance of development, but it's this one that we're most certain in developing here in the very eastern or very western th end of things, better yet. 60% chance of development over the next 48 hours, so there's a better chance than not that within the next two days it will develop. But definitely over the next five days, we have a high 80% chance of development over the next five days as this one looks to approach Bermuda or potentially just to the west of Bermuda. Definitely looks to stay offshore of the east coast, though. Uh, hopefully that's the case. Definitely we, have, we can't really rule out the chance that it trends further westward and does pose a threat to the United States. But as of now, uh, things are looking better and better every day for the United States to be safe and clear from this one. Uh, but we're going to continue to track it. Again, nothing can be completely ruled out, so we're going to have to watch it very, very closely. Now, let's get into the spaghetti model guidance. Here we are taking a look at things, and as you can see, there's pretty much a wide-ranging, uh, def definitely some different perspectives here. We have this model here that takes us very far south into the Bahamas, away from the group of models over here. Uh, and this one would definitely pose a threat to the United States if this was to occur this way. Uh, we have one other one here that definitely is keeping that kind of trajectory this way, which could pose a threat to the east coast of the United States. But as we can see, a majority of them, if I was to draw a cone, would look like this. Um, and maybe that's even overdoing it. I think it would look something like this. Definitely uh, a clear curvature uh, in the track. Uh, there is these outliers here, but for now, we think a curvature towards Bermuda, maybe even east or or west of east of Bermuda, my goodness, 
um, possibly even west of Bermuda, but somewhere in this area is where we would expect it to go. Something like this, or potentially something like this, potentially even hitting Bermuda, uh, but definitely away from the United States. Now, GFS Ensemble model, uh, pretty much on the same page here. We do have this, again, group down here that keep it much further south, much weaker as well, uh, and keep it on trajectory to potentially impact the eastern United States, which is over there. Uh, but a majority of these models have us really curving back uh, like this, where I would say the mean average is something like this, where they're going to just curve out to sea well, well, well out to sea. And all of us can obviously hope for that, as that would lead towards the least risk of the United States seeing any impacts overall. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe to TuneIn Daily because we are going to be going over these things daily and just tracking this tropical system and any other tropical systems that we see this year. There's bound to be plenty. Also, be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it and leave a comment down below with your thoughts. I'll see you guys in the next video.